The Hyperflask cell culture vessel is a revolutionary corning product to scale up cell culture, providing greater consistency of cells and assays with reduced processing and handling time. The Hyperflask cell culture vessel has the same external shape and dimensions of a standard T175 flask, with a cell yield equivalent to 10 times the T175. The flask consists of 10 individual layers, each containing a gas permeable cell growth surface. Each individual flaskette is rigid plastic on one side and a gas permeable plastic film on the cell growth side. Each flaskette is welded together at the top of the flask with a specially designed manifold. The manifold has several features for optimal performance. The air dam prevents the small amount of trapped air to remain in the neck during incubation. The flow diverter facilitates fluid removal during processing. The final product incorporates an air gap between each flaskette for optimal gas exchange and cell growth. Let's get started. We will demonstrate the techniques involved in scaling up your cell culture, seeding a hyperflask cell culture vessel, and then harvesting your cells to dispense into multi-well plates. Take a cryovial of frozen cells out of the liquid nitrogen, thawing rapidly in a 37 degrees Celsius water bath. Dispense the cells gently from the cryovial using a micropipetter into a cell culture vessel such as a low-profile flask which we have previously prepared with 25 milliliters of cell culture medium. This flask provides a 100 centimeter squared surface for cell growth and is optimal for rapid and efficient recovery of frozen cells because the flask is manufactured using the Corning cell bind surface treatment. In addition, this flask has been designed to optimize the space in your incubator and has an ergonomic half turn easy open and close cap. After you have successfully grown up your frozen cells for the number of passages desired, you're ready to scale up, and it's time to seed the hyperflask. Detach cells from the low-profile flasks using your standard laboratory protocol, typically either trypsin, EDTA, or collagenase. Determine the cell number and resuspend in a total volume of 500 milliliters at a cell density of approximately 10 to the fourth power cells per centimeter squared, which equals approximately 1.7 times 10 to the seventh power cells total. Your density may vary depending on your cell type. Holding the hyperflask at an angle of approximately 60 degrees, Gently pour the cell suspension down the canted neck of the flask, avoiding the air dam on the top of the side of the manifold. As the hyperflask fills, slowly return to an upright position. Finish filling the hyperflask using growth medium to the lowest thread on the neck with a 50 milliliter stripette for a total volume of approximately 560 milliliters. During this step, excess bubbles may be removed by pipetting or aspiration. Recap the flask tightly. Gently tap the hyperflask to move any residual air bubbles that may be present to be trapped by the air dam. Gently lay the flask on the bottom surface and confirm the air bubbles remain trapped in the neck. An alternative method for filling the flask consists of adding a smaller volume of the cell suspension such as 25 to 100 milliliters. Pour the cell suspension into the hyperflask. Recap the flask. Distribute the cells evenly to all 10 layers by laying the flask on its side. Then return to the upright position and fill to a final volume, approximately 560 milliliters, with growth medium using a combination of pouring and pipetting as shown in the first method. To harvest cells from the hyperflask, start by pouring the medium out over the straight neck portion of the flask to prevent air from quickly entering the vessel and disturbing the cells. As the liquid level decreases, slowly turn the flask 180 degrees to finish pouring the liquid over the liquid guide on the angled neck. 
Gently rock the flask back and forth using the guide to eliminate any remaining fluid. To remove excess medium, add 100 milliliters or greater of PBS to the hyperflask. Equilibrate the PBS to all layers by laying the flask on its side. Wash all the layers by rocking the flask repeatedly. Some bubbling will occur. This is normal and does not interfere with cell recovery. Small volumes of liquid, such as the 100 milliliters used here, can be removed by pouring directly along the angled neck and gently rocking back and forth. Add 50 to 100 milliliters of cell dissociation solution such as trypsin, EDTA, or collagenase to the flask. Equilibrate and rock back and forth as shown with the PBS rinse. To facilitate liquid distribution, tilt the flask at a 45 degree angle to bring all the liquid to the bottom layers. Rock the flask back and forth to cover the bottom layers. Turn the flask over and repeat to cover the remaining layers. To decrease dissociation time, the flask can then be placed in the incubator until the cells detach. You can monitor cell detachment under the microscope where the bottom two layers of the 10 layer stack can be observed. Return the flask to the hood, rock back and forth and gently tap the flask to remove cells from the growth surface. Pour the cell suspension into a suitably sized collection container such as a 250 milliliter conical tube, shaker flask, or storage bottle. Pour directly along the angled neck and gently rock back and forth as before. If using trypsin, the cell supernatant can be poured into a collection vessel containing an inactivation solution such as serum containing medium. To maximize cell recovery, wash the flask with an additional 50 to 100 milliliters of PBS, rocking the flask back and forth as shown before. Additional rinses are unnecessary. Count the cells harvested from the hyperflask and suspend at the desired concentration in a suitable vessel such as a Corning 500 milliliter disposable spinner flask on a stir plate. Dispense the cell suspension into a Corning 384 well low volume microplate using an automated liquid handler. Alternatively, the 200 million cells harvested from a single flask can be used for a variety of other applications, such as freezing. For more information, contact Corning Life Sciences.